All right, this video is sponsored by me, this guy. Guys, visit our supply codes. Great way to support the channel. Have all kinds of cool stuff that you'd be interested in from hats, apparel, belts, knives, bags, all kinds of stuff. We have a few new additions, and if you like really nice leather crafted goods, then you gotta check out our Popov wallets. We have three different styles to choose from. Lifetime guarantee, it's Horween leather, which is the nicest stuff out there. It's embossed with our logo, which is absolutely amazing. This is tiger stitching, and I don't know what that means, but it sounds aggressive, and that's really fun. It's not RFID blocking, because apparently that isn't even a thing anymore, so if you're worried about it, get with it, bro. There's no RFID skimming that happens anymore. So. We're back to just amazing awesomeness, field notes, different stuff to choose from. Link down below, but it's it's time to roll a video, guys. So here we go. trying to do is get you to think about the learning training process so that you actually approach it with a brain and we're not just trying to chase the rabbit of whatever anyone's doing on Instagram that looks sexy. Let's start with a fight in mind, the real fight, not how we imagine a fight would go in a dojo when we're learning to spar somebody who's playing by a certain set of rules. The bad guy comes out of nowhere. All the police reports, they came out of nowhere and it'll happen faster than you would have imagined, more intense, more aggressive, over an amount of time that happens wildly close. Your average gunfight's this distance kind of thing right here, which means, man, that precedent is really on raw, nasty speed, violence of action, aggression. You're, you're probably not going to be able to get in that good shooting stance. You'll probably be falling <coughs> back or forward or left and right, diving clumsily, Half of the fight's a martial arts contest where you are freaking out and all sexy finesse is way gone, right? But that's the reality of what we're dealing with. It's horrible, terrifying stress under crushed down time constraints. And a lot of times in some situations, you won't see it coming at all. That's the worst case scenario when you're kind of like on the X. When someone else is on the X and you're like, you hear shots, you're like, what the, what's going on? I'm like, I think that's gunfire. It's like, check my area here, and then maybe I stay holstered, and I don't have a family with me, and I want to white knight it and take all the inherent legal, moral, and tactical risks that come with that, but I'm going to warrior pull it on because I want to rescue, and maybe I lean in, get a little closer. I'm like, holy cow, that's a, and I have time to think and process, and sometimes the fight goes like that, and you have more time. Sometimes you have no time. When you're on the X and somebody ambushes, and when that's true, we... What I am begging you to do is really think about how different fights come about so that we can back our way, kind of reverse engineer our training process and say, all right, now what skills are the most important? What are the things that I need to do? Of like, hey, your fitness is really important. You need to be fast and agile. You need to be flexible so you can jump down under a table and, uh, you know, basically uh, scurry real low hop back up, you know, take an angle, have good balance and flexibility. That's really important. That can save your life. You need to be able to go, 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 go. Sun Tzu in his Art of War said, speed is the essence of war. And what was, uh, pray tell, what was the secret of the German war machine in, in World War II? Blitzkrieg. It was Blitzkrieg. What does that mean? Lightning, Lightning war. war. And their whole strategy rested on um, secrecy with their enigma. And then fast, fast, fast. And that was their secret. And every surveillance tape you ever see online, there's there's thousands of these where we can literally get real life scientific data. What are the, some of the common themes and denominators you notice? Right. It's surprise, it's ambush, and it happens fast and violent, in and out kind of thing, right? That's what you're up against. So we take that knowledge and then we come to the problem of the flat range and say, all right, how do I use this as a training field so I can get ready for that. 
and in short, what I'm basically driving at with all this training mindset, fighter philosophy stuff is the flat range is a tool that is very limited in application. We need it, but our goal here is to get all of our skills of here's the draw, here's the reload, here's the, you know, how you use cover and concealment, and that kind of falls under tactics, or whatever the, the skill is. Here's just your fundamentals of fire, and all that stuff is just basically, for me in my context, a little box that I'm wanting to check off. That's all it is. It's a means to an end. It's a stepping stone that I'm going to use and then move on. And when I say move on too, of like, man, we got a lot of stuff to cover. Of, I want great fundamentals and skills. Good. Some folks, that's their whole game. And that's more of the competitive shooting game. They have tactics, but it's more of like the strategy and tactics of how to game a stage. Nothing that's shooting back. And for my part, I'd say I love competitive shooting. Benefited a ton from it and think it's an awesome sport. And I encourage you to get involved in the sport, but it's a sport, right? It's maximizing the skills part, and it does so famously. For us, for defensive and fighting applications, we recognize, man, our targets shoot back, which changes the game a little bit for us. So for us, it's a means to an end. For them, it's an end of itself. It's not an end for me. For me, it's a box I'm wanting to check. I'm like, all right, fundamentals fast and accurate, looking pretty good, let's move on. And now we'll start adding other components to it, right? Of Let's think about the placement on a battlefield. If you know, understand a battlefield in a glimpse, you know, ah, where do you need to be and when do you need to be there? If a bad guy presents himself and you want to get off the X, what does that look like? You can say, oh, well, there's a car engine block right there, not realizing that the moment you get down, this guy is absolutely going to be following close or uh, closely flanking and the moment you sit down behind that first piece of cover the cover has expired and you never got off the x at all you got down behind cover but that was under the foggy false amazingly stupid assumption that the bad guy was going to sit still watch the surveillance tapes what happens they always closely flank or follow it's a tight flank or follow which means the moment you sit down under that first piece of cover it's expired and so you think get down behind cover and then try to shoot back you never actually got off the edge. So knowing that, that, that's a psychological component which relates to positioning and timing on a battlefield. It's basically just a tactics 101 for civilians. And if you didn't know that, and that was your plan of like, oh no, down and shoot back, and you didn't know what I'm telling you right there, you were going to lose 10 out of 10 times, which meant maybe you killed them, but you got shot too. They were right up on top. They just follow you around, running their muzzle in your chest, pulling the trigger until they realize, oh, he's got a gun too. And then they'll either beat feet, dig in, or wide flank. And those are one of those three options is what they're going to do. And you start to realize, ah, it's chess. It's not just skills, is it? It's chess. It's living, breathing apex predators who thought about how to hunt man. And you have to respond to that in a moment. It's more about positioning timing on a battlefield and understanding the psychology of the bad guy so that you'll know how they fight what decisions they're going to make and it becomes very predictable after you play this game a little bit right i would i would trade a single shred an ounce of battlefield wisdom <clears throat> see it in a glimpse know where to go when to go there how long to stay there and where to go after i trade an ounce of that knowledge that tactical um that tactical framework for a pound of skill of fast and accurate. Now, we, for our part, we're going to have our cake and eat it too. Pistol 1 is about fast, accurate, and we gain, there, gain that through efficiency and consistency. It's highly, highly scientific. It's technical. You're going to hate me. You're going to feel like your brains are bleeding. So the fact that I think tactics are outrageously more important than skill, it is. It just is. The skill guys won't like that, but I'm I'm a skill guys too, so I get to, yeah. If like you, you take uh, as a case of point and the idea of violence, and you can look at history, and it's just replete with examples of this. Francis Marion, what was he called? Francis Marion, come on. Don't blame no, the Swamp Fox. Oh, Got it. History teacher, pound sand, do push up. <laughs> Very good. Anyway, the Swamp Fox, they had this just ragtag group of colonists, and they were nothing compared to the might of the British Empire, 
with their disciplined red coats. They're just a mate, and it was very intimidating. And they recognized, hey, we can't match the Brits for skill or numbers. I got chill bumps thinking about just history alive, electric, whispering us to the past, right? Uh, anyway, that sounds very poetic, but warrior poets, come on, you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, Francis Marion and just this group of ragtag soldiers engaged in what we know as guerrilla warfare. And so what you could have is like a brigade of disciplined redcoats with just a group of five or ten colonists running around in the wood line and every once in a while they just take a, po a bunch of pop shots, kill some of them or harass and then break contact. And by the time they're all lined up, porting arms ready, aiming, the, the, they're gone. And guess what? You're like, all right, we're in the wood line. That went pretty well. Everyone okay? Yeah, I got him. I'm like, I know, that's good. Way to go. You got him. And you're like, hey, let's, let's hit him two miles down the road again. And so what happened is just a few dudes could keep terrorizing, destroying the morale, sinking their numbers. If you kill or wound one man, you take four people out who have to carry him now, or medevac, and now that unit is now vulnerable as it's been broken up. So all of a sudden you can do that and it's basically terrorizing the troops and making their progress so ridiculously slow you can take a, a trip that was going to take such and such time and quadruple it because they're constantly thinking that some 50 caliber musket's about to canoe their face, right? And so you see, ah, it's tactics, isn't it? I'm like, absolutely. It's why we rule the animals. Not because we're stronger or faster, sharper teeth, sharper claws, it's because we're smarter. And that's how we beat our enemies too. It's fighting smart, right?